Chichester's exploits began with a solo flight from Croydon to Sydney, Australia, in a tiny de Havilland gypsy moth plane in 1929. He then set his sights on completing the flight around the world in 1931, but crashed in Japan. This failure gnawed at his mind for the next 30 years, and led to a second attempt, this time under sail. Chichester set out from Plymouth in 1966 aboard the 57-foot Gypsy Moth 4 to race against the time set by the great clipper ships to Sydney and back. The route took him around the Cape of Good Hope and down into the Roaring Forty latitudes to Australia. He would almost certainly have completed the first leg in 100 days, but on November the 15th, near disaster struck. With 11,000 miles behind him and 3,000 to go, his self-steering gear was smashed by the force of wind and heavy seas. His morale low, he changed course for Fremantle. But to use his own words, the more I thought about it, the more it stuck in my gullet. So after rigging a makeshift sail and steering device, he once again headed for Sydney, where after 107 days at sea, he arrived to a tumultuous reception. Soon he announced that the modifications were complete and so prepared to leave. These 10,000 ton cruisers with powerful engines were rounding the horn in a gale when these pictures were taken. Imagine the effect on a tiny catch and its one-man crew. Some might call it madness to try, but to Chichester, this is living. He is a man with confidence in his own ability and faith in himself and his craft. Only three men have sailed single-handed round the Horn and survived its fearsome winds and mountainous seas. An aerial search was in progress and HMS Protector stood by in an attempt to sight Gypsy Moth as she rounded the Horn. On March the 20th, she was sighted on Protector's radar screen. And soon the lookout spotted her, sailing under a storm jib the size of a bath towel, lashed by salt spray and at times lost from sight behind gigantic waves. The eagerly awaited news was flashed round the world, but for the lone navigator still 7,000 miles from home, there was no respite. He set course for Plymouth, where preparations were being made to give this man a welcome fit for a hero. Not since the first Sir Francis scattered the Armada has Plymouth known such a celebration. The odyssey of this lone sailor caught the imagination of the whole world. Beacons blaze as in the days of the Armada against a darkening sky, signalling to the crowds that Gypsy Moth is nearly home. This courageous human achievement would have been outstanding for any man. But for a man in his mid-sixties, who qualified for his old age pension during the voyage, a man with failing eyesight who conquered lung cancer seven years ago, it is almost unbelievable. For the first time in history, the Queen commanded that the knighthood should be conferred in public using a sword originally owned by Sir Francis Drake 400 years ago. A gesture fit for a man honoured not only by his queen, but by all men with adventure in their hearts. Sir Francis is dubbed Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. Gypsy Moth then remained on display at Greenwich, alongside the Cutty Sark, for the next 37 years.